Hello friends, welcome to today's video. For today's video, again, we're taking a little pause on beauty and fashion and all that good stuff. And we're talking more spiritual stuff, which is my favorite, honestly. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know that I go live Monday through Friday and I show you guys, or I do a small devotional, um, anywhere from like 10 to like 15, 16 minutes, um, something short where you guys can really get plugged in and just aid and help you in your spiritual life daily. Okay, so if you're not following me already on Instagram, follow me so you guys can have access to those live videos. Um, so I do those and um, I've gone through books in the Bible, I've gone through the book of Proverbs, I've gone through um, the book of 1 John, which is one of my favorites. But what I did um, this last uh, time was go through a book and a study that, that I did a long time ago. And um, this was actually my third time going through this study. And it is a study that's been around for, I feel like decades. It's been, yeah, out and people and churches have been doing them for decades. And that study is the book, Experiencing God. This is what it looks like. It's a little tour here because my two-year-old got, you know, his hands on it. Um, but this is the revised student version. They have a bigger version um, that is just as good. And that's the one that I did initially. And then I did this one the second time and the third time around. But this study has been so powerful in my life, so influential. If you watch my video on how to study the Bible, I give you guys recommendations on what studies you should do. This is one of those studies. So I did this whole book and this video is going up on Friday. So by Friday, we should have already had finished Finish this book okay um, I wanted to give you guys just a little review on this whole book okay and the reason why this book was so influential in my life and why it's so key to experiencing God the title of this book is because the author who's Henry Blackaby and Claude King <laughs> Um, what they do is that they go through scripture, okay? And they see different stories in the Bible, different biographies, different uh, people that the Bible talks about. For example, Moses, Noah, Paul. And they see how it is that God worked in their lives, you know? Um, not like a cookie cutter method, but just how it is that they were able to engage with God and God was able to use them to do such amazing things and ultimately how they were able to experience God. So these stories in the Bible are just not there for us to read and to, you know, put our eyes on them and how wonderful these people were. No, we're, I really do believe that these stories that we read are to point to Christ and to point to his work and how he does things. So the main character is God. God himself and looking at these stories okay they were not there these stories were not there for as a coincidence again they're there to really portray to us God's power and how it is that us humans you know can go into partnership with this amazing God our father and do amazing things for him here on earth so what the these authors do is take all those people and just really see what it is that they have in common um, as far as how it is that God engaged them into his work, okay? Because looking at that, you know what I'm saying, we can see how God can use us and can speak to us and we can experience him now in 2018, you know? Um, the Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the way that he has been engaging with us humans from the get, you know, we can see it in his scriptures, in the word. And that's probably how he's going to engage with us now, in the now, in the present. Okay, each uh, situation was different um, in its own specific way because obviously we're all different. But in the way that God engaged them, we can really pull out those methods and see, wow, God, this is how probably you're going to um, reveal yourself to me and how I'm able to experience you more deeper, okay? So what the authors did is they came up with what they say seven realities when experiencing God, okay? Or seven realities of experiencing God. And they have this beautiful diagram here at the end of the book. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like. All right, and here are all the seven realities. And they have this pretty much to show us and to walk us through how it is that people in the Bible were able to experience God and go into work with him. So this is what I'm going to use to show you guys, just like a little cheat sheet, the seven realities, okay? You guys ready? So as we're going through the realities, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a person from the Bible, which was Moses, okay? And we're gonna go through his life and how it is that God um, how Moses was able to experience God and how he was able to work for God, you know what I'm saying, through these realities. So I'm going to name each reality and we're going to see how it is that they flow into or we can see them 
mirrored in Moses' life, okay? So just a little background, Moses, right, was a Jewish descent, okay? When he was born, there was a band um, in Egypt because Pharaoh was scared or afraid that the Israelites or the Jewish people were gonna take over the Egyptians. They were growing so, so much. So Pharaoh said, okay, I want all of the midwives to, uh, when they're assisting the Jewish um, women that were giving birth, if it's a boy, kill them. If it's a girl, let them live. But if it's a boy, you have to kill them. So this was something that was huge that was happening. So Moses' mother gave birth to Moses, saw he was a boy, and kept them secretly in his house for three months. But he got to age, obviously, that she couldn't keep him from crying um, or come from hiding him anymore, that she trusted the Lord. And she felt like the Lord was telling her to, to make a basket, put him in a little, a little floating basket, and to put him in the river. So she did that, okay? And his sister kept an eye on him. Um, but as Moses, being baby Moses in the basket, was drifting off, um, he actually landed where Pharaoh's daughter was bathing. And she saw the baby, had compassion on him, adopted Moses into her family, and he became an Egyptian. So he wasn't killed. He grew up in the palace, right? Even though he was Egyptian, he knew he was of Jewish descent, all right? So that's a little background on Moses. So going back to our realities, reality number one is God is always at work around you. And this is amazing because we see this even in 2018. God from the beginning of time has always been working, okay? Working to restore his people, to bring his people to him for healing, for salvation. You know, he is always, always working, okay? Even in our lives, sometimes things don't make sense. You know, if we call ourselves children of God and we follow Jesus and he is our hope, God is always, always working around us, always, okay? Okay. Um, there's a preacher that we listen to, his name is John Piper, and he says, God is doing like 14,000 things for us every day, and we're only aware of like three or four. And this is just proof that God is always absolutely working. You know, he was working in the Bible and the scriptures in the silent when no one was really expecting it. God was always at work. Okay, so in looking at Moses' life, God was working in the sense of that the Israelites, the Jewish nation, was crying out to God and letting him know, hey, we are suffering here. Please, please you know, um, rescue us from the hands of Pharaoh. And God was listening to them, okay? So God was already at work because he was listening to the, his people that they were crying out to him, okay? And even here in 2018, God is always still working, always. He has not stopped, not for one moment. Reality number two is God pursues a continuing love relationship with you that is real and personal, okay? God is a God who didn't just make us and just step back and let us figure out life. He's a personal God. He is a, a God who is taking the initiative to show us love, to pull us into his love, okay? And the biggest manifestation of his love was Jesus Christ, that he died on the cross for our sins, okay? He is the one who takes the initiative to wake us up, to say, hey, I am here for you. I want to love on you, okay? And he's pursuing a love and tender father child relationship with us. This works in the same way with Moses. God had not forgotten about the Israelites and he had not forgotten about Moses and he wanted to use Moses. So he pursued a love relationship with Moses, drawing him in, okay? So Moses, when he was in Egypt, he knew that he was uh, of Jewish descent. He too wanted to free the Jewish nation and the Israelites, okay? And one day he saw Pharaoh guard beating on this Jewish uh, person or, you know, the slave. And he went over and he fought this, this guard and actually killed him, okay? Um, the following day, he saw two Jewish, um, two Israelites fighting. He went over there to try to stop them. And they were like, well, what are you gonna kill us like you did the, um, the guard? So Moses was afraid. And after that happened, he fled. He fled into the desert and he was there for 40 years, okay? It wasn't until one day that God pursued him, okay? And he was out with the flock and um, Moses noticed a burning bush. And he turned around and he was like, what is this? The bush was on fire, but it wasn't being consumed. Okay, so that right there was God already drawing Moses to himself and trying to establish a love relationship with Moses, okay? Reality number three is God invites you to become involved with him at his work. So the whole reason why he's trying to establish his whole love relationship with you that he initiates is because he wants to invite you to work with him, okay? God is sovereign. He is holy. He is omnipotent, meaning he can do anything. 
he spoke existence into happening so if he wants something to happen it will happen okay he's all powerful and really doesn't need us but he chooses to use us okay um he chooses to in that love relationship welcome us into um into work with him okay into going into assignments with him and you just being aware of that and being aware of when the holy spirit's talking in your heart to do something for god right there that's god's invitation to saying hey i want you to work with me and i want you to experience me through that okay here in 2018 if i'm aware of anything a need that needs to be met in my church in my neighborhood that is right there god pulling me in and stirring my heart to saying hey maybe this is where i want you to be working alongside with me okay and that is what happened with moses he told moses hey i have heard my people cry and i want to um, free them from pharaoh and i'm going to use you he was very direct to moses i want to use you to bring my people out of egypt and to free them so he was involving moses god could have with a blink in the blink of an eye or a snap of his fingers free these people okay in no time but he chose to use Moses to do so. And just like that, he can do whatever he wants, you know, here in 2018, but he uses us, his body, his people, his children to do his work here on earth, okay? So that's reality number three. Reality number four is God speaks by the Holy Spirit through the Bible, prayer, circumstances, and the church to reveal himself his purposes and his ways. So we have to be children of God to be able to hear from God because it is through the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is only given to those who are children of God, okay? Um, we become children of God when we admit that we are sinners and we put all of our hope in Jesus, all right? And only then can God himself dwell in us through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the way that God's gonna speak to us, all right? In the Old Testament, God spoke through, to his people through um, prophets, um, sometimes audibly, okay? Um, but here now in 2018, God speaks through um, other ways. And the four ways that, that this book focuses on that the Lord still speaks to us now is through the Bible, through his scripture, through prayer, through our circumstances and through the body of Christ, okay? Number one is very important, which is his word. That's why we have to be in his word and reading his Bible every single day. That is how he's going to speak to us, making a habit every day to open up our word and, and hear from God. Number two is prayer. We need to be on our knees speaking to God and hearing him, tugging our heart, certain things, you know what I'm saying, that he wants us to do. I usually do that where I read the Bible, and then I pray and I say, Lord, anything that I read that you want to speak into my life, you know, bring it to my mind so that I can meditate on it. Okay. So prayer, God speaks to us most definitely through prayer. Also through the church, we are part of a community. We are not called to do this Christian thing or Christian walk by ourselves. We have a community of brothers and sisters that are united by the perfect blood, blameless blood of the perfect lamb, Jesus Christ. So we are a family. So, so many times have God has God spoken to me through other believers, through the body of Christ, okay? And also through circumstances. I feel like I go through some, some things that are not coincidence. There's no coincidence throughout the day that I'm able to experience things or, you know, when I'm out doing errands or with my children where I feel like God speaks to me, you know? God is always, always trying to speak to us. And those are the main ways that God speaks um, directly to us. And what does he say through those things, through those means? He reveals himself, his purposes, and his ways. So through that is where we can see where it is that God wants us to work, specifically what it is that he wants us to do. But again, it takes work because we have to roll up our sleeves and really get in there, okay? And when we're, when we're praying and we wanna hear from God, let's be sure that we are very intentional about trying to hear his words spiritually through those means. That is how God speaks to us in 2018, but with Moses, God spoke audibly through that burning bush, okay? Like he audibly heard most, heard God speaking to him. All right, this leads us to reality number five. God's invitation for you to work with him always leads you to a crisis of belief that requires faith and action, okay? So when we hear from God and we know what he wants us to do, we will have a crisis of belief because now is the time for us to act on whatever it is that God is telling us to do. And that's not easy, okay? It's easy to just talk the talk, but to walk the walk, man, you're gonna go through something where you're just like, do I really believe in God? Because this next step is going to show what it is that I believe about God. Am I 
putting all my faith in him? Do I believe that he's the one who spoke to me and that he's calling me to do this, okay? And Moses went through this when God told him that he was gonna use him to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. Moses was like, um, yeah, I think you should do somebody else. I'm not sure that I can do it. I stutter. He gave so many excuses and he had that crisis of belief like, is this really God that's speaking to me, okay? And you know what? And at that point, what you do next reveals about reveals what you believe about God. If you don't do anything that really believes that, hey, maybe you don't believe, you're not 100% there. But if you take that step of faith, which is what God wants you to do, boy, are you gonna really experience God. And that shows to God that you do believe in what he's telling you to do. The sixth reality is you must make major adjustments in your life to join God in what he is doing. We cannot stay where we are at and follow God. We can't because what he's calling us to do is something that we are not normally inclined to do, okay? God wants us to step out of our comfort zone and do what he's telling us to do. I feel like a lot of times we are the ones who are telling God what we wanna do and we sit here and we say, God, we wanna do this for you and we wanna feed the poor for you and I'm gonna figure out so amazing, so many amazing things to do for you and God says, no, 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 no. What I want you to do is adjust your life to where I'm working, okay? Stop where you're at, move directions, and go where it is that I am showing you that you have to do and you have to go. And that, and that is key, you know, because we don't naturally wanna do God's will and we're not naturally heading in the direction that God wants us to do. So stop telling God what you wanna do. Put that off to the side and focus on what God's showing you to do and make those major adjustments in your life. A lot of times we're going to have to make financial adjustments, you know, uh, commitment adjustments. Um, sometimes they're major adjustments. Some might be minor adjustments, which can lead us into major adjustments. And we see this in the life of Moses. Moses had to leave his home in the desert and go back into Egypt where he could have been killed because they were looking for him because of what he did with that guard. Okay, so that was a major adjustment. He showed there, God, I believe you. And that's why I'm gonna go to Pharaoh. Can you imagine Moses like going up to Pharaoh and telling him, God told him to let his people go. Isn't that amazing? And Moses did it and he showed that he had faith in God. And the last reality is you come to know God by experience as you obey him and he accomplishes his work through you. So all this, right? All these steps and all this reality so we can come to experience him. Once we take that step of adjustment, and we are obedient to what God's calling us to do, then we are able to experience him in a way that we would have never experienced him before. God does not want us to be the ones just opening up our word, reading it, getting filled, and then being done and going about our life. No, he wants, go he wants us to go into a journey with him. There's no way that you're gonna get to know God in a deeper way if you don't go into mission with him, if you don't go into work with him, if he doesn't give you assignment and you go, because you're not going by yourself, you're going with him. He's the one that's gonna equip you, equip you, and he's the one that's going to guide you to where you should be going, and he's gonna go with you, and that is where we're going to experience him, and that's where we see Moses. Moses absolutely did that, okay? He was able to experience God as the great I am, as the great provider, as the rescuer because after he took his people out of Egypt, this is when he parted the Red Sea. God parted the Red Sea so they could go on dry land and actually deliver them from the hands of Pharaoh. So we are able to experience God in very unique ways that we would not have before if we do not obey him and go into mission with him, okay? Yes, we see this in the life of Moses, but honestly, we see this very clearly in the life of Jesus as well. Jesus being God himself took upon himself to be a servant of God and did everything that God wanted him to do. Jesus said, I cannot do anything apart from what God is telling me to do. Okay, I am here relying on God 100%. And I think about that and I'm like scratching my head like, well, he was God himself, yes. But he did that to be an example to us. We cannot do anything that has an eternal um, impact or eternal result by ourselves. We need to really see where God is working and join him in what he's doing. Let's stop telling God what we wanna do for him and actually obey him in what he's telling us to do. And that way we can experience him beyond any way that we can even think about, okay? So one verse that I wanna leave with you guys um, is the very first verse that uh, the author shares with us in chapter one, and that is in John 15, five. It says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Again, if we wanna do something that is God-sized, that will give God all the glory, the people around us, 
that don't believe in Jesus can be attracted to God and really want to know God personally and want to experience God, we need to be plugged into God every single day, okay? Just like the branches are plugged into the vine and they can do nothing by themselves. They need to be have continual nourishment and growth from the vine. In the same way, we need to be plugged into God every single day. I love how it says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And that means that apart from God, we can do nothing that could really have a God-sized effect and has an eternal and kingdom purpose. That's why we need to be plugged in with him all the time. So yeah, guys, that is just a review, a short review of this book because the author goes into detail. He takes like chapters to explain each reality and why they are based in the Bible and how we can experience God that way. Okay, so I highly recommend you guys read this book. God has spoken to me in amazing ways through this book. And again, this was the third time that I read this book when I did it through my Instagram live videos. Um, and just a little disclaimer, if you want to experience God, you have to become a child of God. In order to become a child of God, you need to, we need to go through his son, Jesus Christ. Okay, the Bible says that if we repent of our sins and we understand that we, apart from Jesus, have nothing to offer to God, only our sin, okay, if we repent from that and we submit our lives to Jesus and see that he is the only way to God, that his perfect sacrifice is the only bridge that leads us sinners to God, Okay, only then can we restore our relationship with God. Only then can we become children of God. Only then can he speak to us and we go into assignment and to mission with him and actually experience him. So that's a disclaimer. This study and you experiencing God, you have to love God and you have to become a child of him. I love how in this book it says, in order for you to love God, you have to know God. Knowing him means loving him. And once you love him, you will trust him and you will obey him and then you can experience him, okay? All right, guys, that's about it. I'm really sorry this video was long. I really just wanted to skim through, you know, the realities of this book. Um, I will have a link below to where you can purchase it if you wanna start the study. Um, and again, if you can't find this latest, latest version, even the older version totally works as well, okay? All right, that's about it. Love you guys and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hello friends, thank you so much for stopping by and checking out my videos. It really does mean the world to me that you guys take time out of your busy day to watch my videos. So I wanna share with you guys a few things I promise you will not take long at all. Number one, I accept prayer requests, okay? So if there's anything that you want prayer over, I have seen the power of prayer in my life and my family's life, just contact me in any way, shape or form via email, via Instagram, Facebook, or even just a comment below and I will add you to our prayer list that me and my family pray over every single day. Number two, if you have Instagram, you should totally be following me. Why? Because I go live Monday through Friday and I do a small devotional Bible study, not too long, anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, but just a way for you guys to be spiritually connected with God every single day. So yes, check me out and follow me. And last but not least, I own an online t-shirt company. So you guys should totally check me out. The link to my online shop is all the way in the bottom. And there's also a coupon there for free shipping on your first order. I make very cool, comfy, faith-based t-shirts like the one that I'm wearing now. This is our Dusty Rose Fear Not t-shirt. I love this t-shirt, it's one of my favorite. But yes, you guys should totally check us out. All right, that's about it. Thank you so much for listening to these messages and I hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye.